A Palestinian like me with no homeland, no passport, and no identity. One who is destined to be born in a country that is not his, and live among people who view him primarily as a refugee. These are the words of Abu Zubaydah. He is a Palestinian who has been in U.S. custody for almost 20 years. He has never been charged for any crime. He has never been tried. He has never been convicted. But he is still locked up at a secret CIA-controlled site in the U.S. naval base at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Once declared third in command, now the CIA says that he is not even a member of Al-Qaeda. But he is still there. There in a limbo called Guantanamo. The infamous torture memos were written for one person, Abu Zubaydah. And we intend to get every single thing out of him to try to prevent terrorist acts in the future. Rumsfeld's boss, President George Bush, was with him. Or Ramsey bin al Sheev or Abu Zubaydah, cold-blooded killers who were part of planning the attack that killed 3,000 people. After about a week of torture, the CIA in Thailand sent a message to their headquarters in Washington, D.C. They said it was highly unlikely that Abu Zubaydah was withholding intelligence. But the CIA ordered them to continue. It took five years for them to discover that Abu Zubaydah was not even a member of Al-Qaeda. That was 15 years ago. Abu Zubaydah fled Afghanistan to seek refuge in Pakistan as the U.S. bombing had started. On March 28, 2002, he was detained by Pakistani intelligence. From there, the CIA rushed him to its secret torture site in Thailand. The agency hired two American psychologists, James Elmer Mitchell and Bruce Jessen. They were paid $81 million to reinvent torture since it is illegal under U.S. law. They renamed it to Enhanced Interrogation. Abu Zubaydah was the guinea pig of this fancy torture scheme. Starting August 4, 2002, the CIA tortured Abu Zubaydah for almost 24 hours a day for several weeks. They used 12 brutal torture techniques, but waterboarding was their weapon of choice. This was a medieval technique borrowed from the Spanish Inquisition of Jews and Muslims in the late 1400s. U.S. prosecutors declared waterboarding as a crime after World War II, but the War on Terror became the excuse to allow many illegal things to happen, including waterboarding. Abu Zubaydah was waterboarded at least 83 times. Between these torture sessions, he was often kept in one of the confinement boxes, according to the U.S. Senate report. Abu Zubaydah was forced to spend 11 days in this coffin-sized box. Worse yet, he was forced into an even smaller box for 29 hours. It is just two and a half by two and a half feet. As part of his torture, the CIA also released insects into his room, which Abu Zubaydah could not run away from since he was tied up. This is what Senator Dianne Feinstein, chair of the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee, said. In contrast to CIA representations, detainees were subjected to the most aggressive techniques immediately, stripped naked, diapered, physically struck, and put in various painful stress positions for long periods of time. 
Abu Zubaydah was kept naked, shackled, and hooded. He was slammed into a concrete wall. The FBI objected to torture and left the investigation, but the CIA kept torturing Abu Zubaydah. The agency went on to use these torture techniques all around the world. This is also when the horrors of Abu Ghuraib prison were born in Iraq. Abu Zubaydah's torture was all filmed, but the CIA destroyed the recording. Hidden in Thailand, videotapes of the interrogation of Abu Zubaydah. I was told if those videotapes had ever been seen, the reaction around the world would not have been survivable. The Senate Intelligence Committee's torture report says that the CIA conceded that Abu Zubaydah was not a member of Al-Qaeda. By January 24, 2018, the UN Security Council also determined that Abu Zubaydah was not a member of Al-Qaeda. Yet he remains in prison. Here is the late Senator John McCain, ranking Republican of the U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee, speaking at the Senate floor on December 9, 2014. McCain had been tortured as an American soldier during the Vietnam War. They stained our national honor. I know the use of torture compromises that which most distinguishes us from our enemies. Our belief that all people, even captured enemies, possess basic human rights which are protected by international conventions the United States not only joined, but for the most part authored. Abu Zubaydah has never been charged. He has never been tried anywhere in the world and has never been convicted of any crime. But he is still not being released. The U.S. government intends to imprison him until his death. Here is Senator Dianne Feinstein, chairwoman of U.S. Senate Intelligence Committee. It shows that the CIA's actions a decade ago are a stain on our value and on our history. The release of this 500-page summary cannot remove that stain, but it can and does say to our people and the world that America is big enough to admit when it's wrong and confident enough to learn from its mistakes. But unfortunately, America did not learn any lessons from its mistakes. Former President Donald Trump appointed Gina Haspel as the CIA director. She is responsible for commanding the CIA torture site in Thailand. However, no one responsible for torturing Abu Zubaydah has been punished. His ordeal is still not over. In the meantime, the CIA assisted Hollywood to produce the blockbuster film Zero Dark Thirty. The film falsely portrays the torture called Enhanced Interrogation Works. That stateless Palestinian, Abu Zubaydah, is still in prison.